Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Visions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have conceived an extremely daring and dangerous plan to surprise two criminals who are holding Carol captive in the Martian hills. Right now, they're nearing the hideout in a small atmosphere ship. We're getting closer. Fasten your safety belt, Happy. Here's where we intentionally develop power failure. I'm all set, sir. Hang on. I'm about to make the worst landing of my career. That ground's coming up awfully fast, Commander. We've got to make this look like a disastrous crash. Okay, but it's beginning to look too realistic. Now brace yourself. It's beginning to look like a real thing to me, too. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, Crash Landing. Yes, it's Space Patrol, but first, a direct broadcast from the yard of public school number 10 on the planet Terra. It's recess here, gang, and I've got my eye on a fast-moving boy named Jeff Fisher. Man, is he supercharged. Hey, Jeff, come on over here and tell the gang how you get supercharged every morning. I just do it the way Buzz Corey does it. I eat a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal, like Rice checks. Rice checks? Say, hey, that Rice checks is real swell eating, right? I'll say, and it's bite-sized, too. Only bite-sized rice cereal in the universe. Only rice cereal for me, boy. It's plenty keen. You betcha. So, boys and girls, don't you think it's about time you tried Rice checks? Remember, to think fast, to act fast, you have to eat a breakfast that supercharges you. A power breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal. So today, make it Rice Checks, the delicious bite-sized super cereal that helps to supercharge you. For several weeks, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have been on the planet Venus conducting an undercover investigation into a plot to defraud the United Planets government and Venus businessmen. Now, in civilian clothes, Buzz and Happy are in a surface car in Venus City, headed for the Venus City spaceport. Between them is a sealed pouch containing the results of their intensive work. There's a private space cruiser waiting for us just inside the east gate. Well, sir, do you think Vio knows that you've been investigating him personally? I can't be sure, but by using private ships instead of Terra 5 or other official ships, we stand a good chance of not being detected. Well, that sure was a bad break running into Carol last night in the lobby of the Venus Hotel. Well, luckily, I don't think anyone overheard when she called out our names. I looked around very carefully. You told her why we were in civilian clothes. Mm Mm-hmm. She may be able to help us now that she knows the facts. Yeah, it looks like we picked a good time to blast off from Venus, Commander. The whole east end of the spaceport is deserted. We're in luck, Mr. Veal. Corey's car is the only one on the side road. Well, we'll need a lot more luck to get that evidence away from him. That's a break for us that he picked this deserted end of the port. Well, speed on, Bob. We can pass him before he gets to the gate. And yeah, then inside the gate, I make a quick turn, slam on the brakes, and you tumble out of the truck. Yeah. Chances are Corey won't suspect anything when he sees that this is a regular space patrol maintenance truck. They're usually in a hurry anyhow. Pour on the power, Bob. car behind us, sir. They're blinking their lights to pass. By the way they're closing in, they must be in a hurry. Slow down a little and pull over. Yes, sir. Be on your guard in case they try anything. Wow, that guy drives like a maniac. Did you see him whiz past us? It's a maintenance truck. Yeah, I'll bet the driver's another one of those washed-out space pilots. They always drive like they're sore at the universe. Hey, look at him barrel through that gate. Commander, the fool's gonna turn. Abby, stop. Somebody fell out of the truck. Smoking rockets. What a spill. He turned so fast it tossed the other guy out. At least the driver stopped. Come on, Hap, let's see if the man's hurt. Yes, sir. There's no excuse for that kind of driving. It's lucky we weren't going much faster. We might have run over him, Commander. I dropped the commander, Hap. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. Hey, the fall must have knocked him cold. I'll turn him over gently. Okay. He didn't know I was going to turn. I slammed on the brakes just as he pitched out of the truck. Yes, I saw it. His head doesn't seem to be injured. I hope there are no bones broken. Well, let's have a look at him. 
It's none of my business, friend, but you shouldn't make a turn at that speed. Yes, I, I know. I, I was in a hurry to get to the other end of the uh, spaceport. Uh, my leg. Yeah, just take it easy now. You'll be all right. Uh, now, don't move. Let's have a look at that leg. Uh, yeah. Have a good look. Hey, put down that wrench. <coughs> hey, what do you think you're doing? Grab the cadet deal. Uh, I got him. Slug him, Henry. Let go of me. <coughs> uh, hurry. Get to the surface car and grab the evidence. Okay. And there is a dispatch case in the seat of the car. That must be it. Take a look in the back, just in case. We went to get all of it. Uh, there's nothing back there, Vio. All right, come on. Let's get to the truck. Hey, look down the road. Here yeah. comes another surface car. Uh, it's headed right for the gate. We'd better get the truck rolling before they get here and start asking questions. Oh, we won't stand a chance in that truck. Let's take a spaceship. Huh? Hurry. We can blast off before the car gets here. Happy. Happy. Oh, my head. Half our, our car and their truck are still here, but our spaceship is gone. I thought I heard a blast off, but I figured it was inside my head. I heard oh. another car approach, but it didn't come through the gate. It must have turned down the road paralleling the fence. Hey, the evidence, sir. Did they get it? Yes, it's not here. I guess our undercover work wasn't so undercover after all. That must have been Vio, and he and his partner have taken our private cruiser. Well, maybe we can get another ship and blast off after them. First, let's go to local headquarters and spread an alarm. You drive that truck, and I'll take the surface car. Commander, an all-planet space patrol bulletin on Vio is being space now. Good. I hope our units can intercept him before he has a chance to change ships. We aren't going to stay here at Venus City headquarters, are we, sir? All right now, there's nothing we can do that the search units can't handle. Besides, I want to investigate this gadget we found in the truck Vio was using. Oh, that funny-looking electrical device. What is it? It's a stimutron. A stimu-what? Stimutron. It's a high-frequency electrotherapy machine used to treat advanced cases of venous fever. Oh, you mean the blood condition that some people get from being in the venous swamps too long. Yes. This machine is the only successful cure. There are only about six stimutrons in the, in the solar system, all in hospitals or clinics. No private individual has one. Well, then what was this one doing in the truck? Stolen, probably. Stolen by someone who needs the treatments and who doesn't dare go to a regular hospital. You mean Vio has venous fever? Or one of his gang. I'm notifying all doctors to report anyone applying for Stimutron treatment. Hmm. Well, uh, didn't Vio spend a lot of time around those Zyrola plantations in the swamps uh, arranging crooked deals? Yes. If he's got venous fever, he made a bad bargain when he traded that evidence for the Stimutron. Oh, by the way, sir, did you get that message from Carol? Yes, she called two hours ago. I guess she thought we'd be on our way to Mercury by now. But she checked out of the hotel. I just contacted the manager. Checked out? I thought she was going to stay here a week. I guess she suddenly changed her mind. She left orders for the hotel to forward her luggage to Mercury. They don't have any idea where she is. I wonder why she decided to go to Mercury all of a sudden. Well, I hope it isn't her plan to follow us. Well, if it is, she's going to get a surprise when she lands on Mercury and finds out that we aren't there. We'll be on Mars in a couple of hours, Mr. Veal. That was a great idea of yours, taking Corey's space cruiser. Well, I've been checking over this evidence, Corey Gattard. You know, if this ever got to court, I'd be finished. Well, there's nothing to worry about now. All we've got to do is lay low... Henry! Oh, no. What's the matter, Mr. Veal? Oh, the Stimutron. I left it in the truck. Oh. oh, well, there's probably one in Lowell City Clinic on Mars. I can't just walk into the clinic with every space patrolman in the universe looking for me. I got to have those treatments. You know what that Venus fever does to me. It makes me helpless as a baby. Well, what are we going to do? We can't go back to Venus. Of course not. Henry, this is awful. I, uh, listen. What? Uh, I thought I heard the compartment door close back out. Oh, you're just nervous. Relax, Mr. Veal. You'll think of a way to get those treatments. Yeah, sure, sure. I got to. I just got to. Buzz, Happy, I hope you won't be angry with... What are you doing aboard? Well, I... I, I thought Mr. this Veal, was... Mr. it's the girl we saw at the hotel talking... Shut up, Henry. All right, miss. What are you doing aboard our ship? Your ship? This is Commander Corey's ship, Mr. Veal. Oh, you know who I am. You have the advantage of me, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Carlyle. Carol Carlyle. The Secretary General's daughter. That's right, and I demand you return this ship to Venus immediately. Uh, that's impossible. We can't keep her with us, Mr. Beale. She's dynamite. The smartest thing for us to do is drop her off somewhere and be sure she's safe. Yes, I know. You're right, Henry. But if we do, we're running a good chance of being captured. Why did you have to spoil everything by being aboard? I had some information to give Commander Corey about you, Mr. Vio, and your friend Bob Henry. 
I was going to tell them where they could find you. Well, your attempt at playing detective has put you in a delicate position. And me in a dangerous one. Can't let anything happen to her, Mr. Veal. I'd say it's worth the risk to see she's returned safely. Wait a minute. Maybe this is a break for us after all. Yeah, some break. We can get this girl off our hands and still have a chance to avoid being captured. Henry, we'll go on to my hideout on Mars. I know how we can contact Corey without the risk of being captured. Commander, communications picked up Carol's voice on spaceophone channel 87. What? Yeah, it's being taped, sir. Channel 87. Perfectly the... safe. I can't tell you where I am, but Don Veal and Bob Henry intend to release me. That's her, sir. This is Don Veal, Commander. Veal's got her. Don't try to contact me, just listen. I've got Carol Carlisle, but it's her fault, not mine. That's true. I was aboard your private cruiser at Venus City Spaceport. After the ship blasted off, I came out to give you some information about Veal and found him and Bob Henry at the controls. Just keep listening, Corey. Carol's voice and mine are on a micro tape, automatically repeated from a robot controlled rocket. It won't do you any good to locate a rocket. He's a tricky crook, all right. Get this, Corey. I want to get Carol off my hands. All I ask is a break. I've got Venus fever. If I don't get that stimulant round back, I'm finished. Here's my proposition. Put a man in a spacesuit and drop him off in space at a point which I will give you in a moment. Withdraw your ship 10,000 DUs and wait two hours. I will pick up the stimulant from your agent and leave Carol near him. Also in a space suit, of course. Now get this. Carol's suit will be equipped with a cartridge that can be exploded by an electronic signal from my ship. Why, that space train. Quiet, Happy. If any attempt is made by your men to space a phone, you, before the two-hour limit is up, I'll detonate the cartridge. Now, here's the point to drop off your men. Write this down, Happy. Yes, sir. Sector 4, Jupiter orbit, at intersection of Celestial Meridian 22... Sun ecliptic angle, 2 degrees, 23 minutes, 15.84 seconds. Got it, sir. If you agree to these terms, pace a phone your answer on 139 megacycles. I'll be listening. Stand by for repeat of this tape. VO out. I'll cut it, Happy. The tape is on automatic rewind. What are you going to do, Commander? Give him the stimulatron? Of course. I want VO, but I want him alive. When we get Carol back safely, we can go after VO with everything we've got. Switch to 139 megacycles, Happy. As I computed, Happy, this is the location VO specified. I'll reverse rockets and stop the ship. Right, sir. I'll get into my spacesuit. Now, there's the stimulatron. Well, what about that gadget I'm supposed to attach to VO's ship? Oh, right here. Well, it's a miniature spacephone transmitter. Uh-huh. With a magnetic attachment to hold it to the hull of the ship. It's set to start sending a signal two hours after it's fastened to the ship. All right, into the airlock, Happy. Don't waste your spacesuit transmitter until I contact you. Remember that explosive cartridge in Carol's suit. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Cadet Happy. Come in, Happy. Happy to Commander Corey. Are the two hours up? Yes. Did B.O. show up? Yes, sir. Everything worked fine. He dropped Carol out quite a distance from me, and I've been using my jetpack to get over to her. Is she all right? I don't know, sir. She hasn't moved. She's just floating. I haven't been able to contact her by space phone. I'll come and pick both of you up. I've reached her now, sir. I... Why, that sneaking crook. What's the matter, Happy? Carol isn't here, Commander. The space suit is empty. We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Hey, you want to have some fun, gang? Listen to this jet cycle. Why, it's just a putt-putt, that's all it is, because all it has to go on is ordinary fuel. But pour in some super fuel and then see what happens. Wow, that jet cycle is supercharged now. Yes, sir, when it comes to supercharging, there's only one answer, super fuel. And the same thing holds true for you, especially in the morning when you haven't eaten for hours. To really get going, you have to get supercharged. Now, here's Buzz Corey's way of doing that. 
he eats a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals. And boy, oh boy, you ought to see how the commander dives into that checks. Yes, sir, gang, checks are really good. They're so good, you grab the biggest bowl you can find, you shake in the checks, pour on the milk, sprinkle on the sugar, and that's it. You're eating the best tasting cereal in the universe. And to make a good thing even better, Rice Checks and Wheat Checks have that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. Zip, zip, zip. That's how easy it is to eat checks. Now remember, gang, a rip-roaring breakfast with checks is Buzz Corey's way of getting supercharged. So get going in the morning the way he does. Get out a big bowl and fill it with Rice Checks or Wheat Checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. <laughs> Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have followed to the letter the agreement with Don Vio, who promised to return the Secretary General's daughter, Carol, at a prearranged point in the Jupiter orbit. But instead of Carol, Vio pushed an empty spacesuit out of his ship. The commander has arrived at the scene of the rendezvous, and Happy, now aboard the commander's ship, is removing his spacesuit. That double-crossing, underhanded space rat. Uh, Vio is all of that, but now we've got to help Carol. He must have done something to her, and now he's got the stimutron. He's also got a miniature spacer phone attached to his ship. Hey, that's right. Do you think we can pick up the signal yet? I'll turn on our receiver. Hey, it's working, sir. Now we can track him down. Yes, we've got to be careful. As long as Carol's in his hands, we can't take a chance in closing in on him. <laughs> oh, doggone it. Cosmic ray interference. See if you can filter it out, Happy. Yes, sir. All the time's for that to happen. That seems to be getting worse. We'll keep on this vector. Maybe we'll pick up the signal again. I got it, Henry. The steamer for Oh, good. Any trouble? No, not a bit. Corey and the cadet were as good as their word. Have you found Carol yet? No. Frankly, I haven't looked. She was stupid enough to crawl out the back room window, let her take the consequences. Uh, don't you understand? If she's not found, we'll have to take the consequences. Oh, all right, Mr. Veal. Come on. We'll look for her. No. You'll look for her. I got to hook up the Stimutron and take a treatment. I'm getting an attack of venous fever. The interference is gone, sir, and I've got a fix on the signal. Good. It's coming from the direction of Mars, and the source is stationary. Then Vio has landed. We'll head for Mars and locate the ship. Got it, sir. The ship's down in the Tharsis Hills. Let's scan the terrain with a viewscope, Happy. Yes, sir. There's the ship. Shall we come in lower, sir? No, not in this ship. We can't let Vio know we've located him. How about notifying other units and swoop in quick and surround him? Remember, for all we know, Carol's still safe. If Vio's cornered, there's no telling what he might do to her. Uh, well, then we're stymied. Oh, not quite. There's one way we can land a ship fairly close to his hideout without making him suspicious. What's that, sir? Commercial atmosphere ships fly over this part of Mars. So we'll head for Lowell City and borrow one. Well, wouldn't Vio get suspicious if a commercial ship landed in that deserted section? Sure. If it was an ordinary landing. That's why I'm going to space a phone ahead and order a couple of crash suits. Crash suits? Uh Uh-huh. We're going to stage an accident right in Vio's front yard. Carol! Miss Carol, I see you. Don't try to get away. Come here. You little fool. Where do you think you're going? I, I thought I could get to a relay station. There isn't one for miles. Besides, you're heading the wrong direction. Now, come back to the shack. And if I refuse? Then I'll carry you back. Why don't you be sensible? When the sun goes down, you'll freeze out here. What was the idea of running away in the first place? Vio was going to return you to Corey. I don't trust him. Well, one thing's certain. You won't survive the night out here in this hill. So you might as well trust us. It's to our advantage now to get you back safely. Well, all right. Well, now you're showing some good sense for a change. We're getting close, sir. Yes, we can cut the signal now. Well, fasten your safety belt, Happy. Here's where we develop power failure. I'm all set, sir. I, I guess. Well, Happ, here's where I make the worst landing of my career. Nervous? When I put this shock suit on, I thought I could jump off a skyscraper in it, but now I'm not so sure. Near that knoll, half hundred yards from Veal ship. Brace yourself. Here we go. Well, here we are.
we are. Everybody out. A very realistic crash, sir. Are you all right? I guess so. Except I can't move my right foot. It's caught in the wreckage. Does it hurt? No, sir. The padding of the suit protected it. It's just wedged in. Vio or his partner will be running out here very soon. Maybe I can pry that bent door alloy apart and get you out before they get here. But why don't we go ahead with our original plan? Leave me here in the ship while you circle around to the shack. Our original plan didn't call for you to be helpless. Well, that'll make it look all the more like a real crack-up. Uh, besides, Carol may be in danger. Well, you may be right, Hap, but you'll be safer if you pretend to be unconscious. Yes, sir. I'll climb out the port. Hey, we did a good job. What a mess. If you're in trouble, use your miniature spacer phone. I'll keep mine on. Here, where are you going? To the shack. Oh, no, you don't. I'll get back to the shack. But somebody might be hurt. We've got to help them. Nobody could be alive in that mess. Well, I'm going to see anyway. Carol, come back here. We've got to get Bio and blast off before the rescue ships arrive. Get Bio if you want. I'm going to help. Carol, come away from that wreck. It might explode. Oh, that poor pilot. Get him out. It's all right, Joe. Happy. How are you hurt? No, no, I'm okay. The commander and I planned it. Miss Carroll, get away from that wreck. That's Bob Henry, Theo's partner. Pretend you don't know me. Miss Carroll, you don't get away from it. Oh. But it's unconscious. Uh, uh, why don't you go get Mr. Veal? Yeah, now, isn't it lucky he was wearing a crash suit? Stand back, Carol. Let me have a look at him. Oh, Corey's friend, the cadet. All right, snap out of it, cadet. Leave him alone. Quit playing possum. I heard you talking to Carol. All right, all right. Quit shaking. I'll get out of the ship. I can't. My foot's caught. Oh, it is. Well, I guess you won't be much trouble. But just to make sure... What are you going to do? Give the cadet an anesthetic. Don't hit him. Oh, oh my hand. That blow never even phased him. It's the shock suit, stupid. And if you come near me, I'll clout you into the next sector of Mars. Yeah, there's no use bothering with you. Commander's probably around here somewhere. I've got a way to handle both of you. What are you going to do? Plant this cartridge in the wreckage where the cadet can't reach it. No. Give me that. Get away. Hey, don't shove her around like that. She'll get worse than shoving around in a minute. There. Now, if I have to detonate that cartridge, cadet, well, with all these metal fragments and the remaining fuel trickling through the wreckage, there ought to be quite an explosion. Henry, you can't do that. Then it's up to you to see that I don't have to. Come on, Carol. I'll get V.O. and the detonating control. And, Cadet, if Corey's smart, he'll let you stay alive to see us blast off. Right. Go on in, Carol. Hurry up. Yeah, good work. You found her. Did you hear that crash, Vio? Yeah, I saw the ship hit the other side of the knoll. I was going out when I saw you and Carol run over. No survivors, I suppose? Too many. Vio, we've got to get out of here. Corey and the cadet staged that crash. What? Cadet's pinned in the wreckage. Corey's probably around somewhere. Come on, then. We got to get to our ship and blast off. Wait a minute. Where's that detonator unit? The one that explodes these cartridges? It's on the shelf. What do you need that for? Let's get out of here. I've planted a cartridge in the wreck to take care of Corey and the cadet. Okay, now let's go. We'll have to take care of us for protection. Corey will send a flock of patrol ships after us. Come on, Carol, let's go. Take your hands off of me. Let go of her, Vio. Uh, get your hands up. You too, Henry. Oh, boss. Corey, we're blasting off. Put that gun away and step aside. If you don't, I'll fix that cadet of yours for good. Buzz, he means it. Henry put one of those electronic cartridges in the wreckage. And all I've got to do is press this button and transmit a signal that'll blow that wrecked ship to bits. Play it smart, Corey. Give me that gadget, Henry. I warn you, don't come any closer. One more step and your cadet's a goner. We'll see. All right, press the button, Henry. All right. Oh, Buzz! Corey, I didn't think you'd make me do it. Oh, well, it was a wreck anyway. Uh, Happy, I, I thought that you... Carol, stand back. <laughs> Rush them, Henry. <laughs> Carol, get out of the way. Uh, Henry, get the gun. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Have any more ideas, Vio? No. My job. Oh, Buzz, I nearly died when that wreck exploded. I thought that Happy would be blown to bits. I caught a glimpse of Happy through the window. He'd already gotten out of the ship. I couldn't tip you off in front of these two. I pried myself out of the wreck with a hunk of loose metal. Happy, let's get these characters into their ship and take them to Terra. Yes, sir. Come on, Henry, on your feet. Vio, where's that pouch full of evidence you stole from us? They destroyed it, Buzz. They burned it. Yeah, at least we got ahead of you there, Corey. Now you can't convict us of larceny and fraud. 
That isn't going to help you, Vio. No, compared with what we've got on you now, larceny and fraud are going to sound like flattery. (laughs) (laughs) An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. But first... Hi, boys and girls. This is your commander reminding you to send in today for a pair of space binoculars. Send in today because this offer is soon going to end. You see, I don't want you to get left without one of these swell new binoculars. They're an item I want every single one of you to have. I just couldn't get along without my space binoculars. And for you to be a real space patroller, for you to be one of my own gang, you should have a pair of official space patrol space binoculars too. So don't get left out. Send for your space binoculars today. They make everything in the distance look bigger and clearer. You don't even have to hold them. You slip them over your head and a strong elastic band holds them snugly to your eyes. You can study birds in the trees, spot planes in the sky, read faraway signs, see who's coming up the block, and do all kinds of other things with them all year long. Yes, sir, they're the real McCoy. Four power space binoculars exactly like mine. Big plastic binoculars, five inches long and five inches wide. When you wear them, they stand out from your eyes three and a half inches. So you see, they're not flimsy celluloid goggles or a mask. Now, don't get left out. This is the biggest value we've ever offered, and the offer soon ends. Captain Dick Tufeld, tell the gang how to get their space binoculars. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. Gang, if you don't agree your binoculars are tops, return them and we'll return your money. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have descended into a canyon on Venus to rescue a wounded space pilot. As they reach the injured man, a flash flood roars down the river, piling water up behind the dam above them. We gotta get him out of here quickly, Happy. The water's rising fast. Once we get him to the ledge, we shouldn't have any trouble carrying him to the top. It's a landslide. Press close to the dam and keep your head down. Smoking rockets. That was close. Hurry. We gotta get him up the path. There may be another landslide. Commander, look up there. Most of the ledge is swept away. We're trapped. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Mysterious Meteor, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! This is Commander Corey congratulating a great organization on its 43rd birthday, the Boy Scouts of America. You're an inspiration to youth, a part of America itself. Space Patrol salutes you, Boy Scouts of America. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Virginia Hewitt, Bela Kovach, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. Consult your paper for 